Hello plant people, how are you guys doing? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist with a plant science minor. And on this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about one of the craziest things I've ever seen on the internet, and that is whether or not you should shake your plants to ensure a stronger stem. I, uh, I'm gonna try to get through this with a straight face, but I just, like I understand the logic but at the same time, I just can't get the image out of my head of people shaking their plants every day or like once a week thinking, anyways, this is a myth busting adventure and I'm here to take you on it. And we're going through all the scientific literature to talk about whether or not this is worth your time. If you're not interested in the science and you're just gonna leave a negative comment for me babbling too much, the answer is no, don't do it. Don't, please don't do it. That is just dumb. If you care about the science, then let's jump into it. If you've been lurking for a while, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. We've got an awesome community on this channel. They are fun, they are friendly, and they're all here for the science. And if you wanna be here for the science too, be sure to hit that subscribe button. On this channel, we don't do plant tours and other boring things. We just jump into the science of plants because Mostly because my collection is boring. I think it's boring. It's probably boring to a lot of people. Let me know if you ever want a plant tour. I, I'd do one. Not sure how entertaining it would be, but I'd do one for you. Okay, so let's just let's just jump into the crazy. So the logic of shaking your plants is obviously to develop a stronger stem. I would think. Let me know in the comments below if I'm completely off on the reasoning behind the shaking of the plant, but I'm assuming it's the thought is that you're going to develop a stronger stem over time. There are two things wrong with this. First thing, plants don't thrive in windy environments. They don't specifically choose to live in windy environments. They only tolerate windy environments when they, when they are set up for them. So moral of the story is they exist in windy environments because wind is a thing of earth. They don't specifically seek out windy environments to ensure they get stronger stems. That's your first clue. Second off, every time you do this, you're damaging your roots. There are fine little root hairs on every main root and those little root hairs over time will tend to rip when you decide to shake your plant. Those root hairs are very valuable in cap capturing nutrients because they actually have a charge to them. That charge is what actually attracts the bioavailable nutrients. So you shaking your plant is doing no good for it. The third thing, because there's more than two actually now that I think about it, is the the tree, if it's a tree, like my fiddle leaf fig, for example, um, he's got a whole canopy to support. So he is going to develop his trunk based on the biomass above the plant. It's not going to want to tip over. Um, so it's so long as you're not heavily staking it or anything like that, it's gonna do everything in its power to keep that canopy upright. And the fourth thing, the fourth thing, is that if you have a stem that is weakened or it looks like it's fragile, there's nothing to do with wind stress. It has everything to do with light. So because you haven't given it enough light, it's done something called being leggy. Legginess usually happens when a plant is trying to find light. So what it's going to do is it's going to put all its energy into making very long internodes. Those very long internodes are tend to be very flimsy. If we put a grow light over top of it or we just put it in a window, it will compact those nodes and therefore it's just naturally going to make a wider stem rather than a small leggy stem. So it's just the internodes, what, that's all that's happening there. So the only case where I actually think wind is useful in an indoor setting is actually seedlings. And I've talked about this before and it's the use of a fan. And the fan has less to do with building a thicker stem and more to do with hardening off the plant. So what it's doing is it's essentially reducing mold or any sort of, or anything that's caused by stagnant air that's harmful to the plant. It's also going to help the stomata and the guard cells 
get a sense for evapotranspiration rates in wind, in an outdoor setting. So it's just prepping the plant for the outdoor world where the balance between water and water loss is the stakes are higher compared to a world that's indoors without high winds or anything like that. So it has more so to do with evapotranspiration uh, and very little to do with wind. And anyone who gardens will tell you this, if they have grow lights over top of their plants and they don't have a fan, they won't get leggy plants, even though there's no fan. But if they take away the light and they were to just run a fan, they're still going to have leggy plants, even though they're running the fan. And so therefore, the theory that a stronger stem will come if we just run the fan or we, we expose our, our plants to wind stress is completely false because it just doesn't even play out on a seedling level. What does science say about wind loading? And yes, it's an actual scientific term that an enormous amount of scientists have looked at, most of which are in the forestry industry. What well, actually looked at a quite a few journals, but one of my favorite uh, quotes that came out of one of the scientific journals that I read was a study done by John Moore, and it's called Tree Mechanics and Wind Loading. It was published in the Journal of For Plant Biomechanics, and it says that, Exposure to chronic wind stress results in a number of thigomorphogenic responses. We'll get into what that means, including changes in the tree shape and the internal wood properties. This was all done in the context of the forestry industry because wind, because wind is so economically stressful to the forestry industry. They are trying to look at the effects of wind on plants and not the good things about wind and plants. It's actually the negative side effects of wind and trees or plants. So he's looking at it from solely trying to correct the losses that wind causes. In his mind, he thinks that less wind is better when it comes to plants or less wind stress is better. And in our context, less shaking of our plants is better. This is why he states, an improved knowledge of the mechanics of wind loading on trees aids the better management of the risk of damage to forests and a better understanding of the thigomorphogenic responses of trees to wind stress and the biomechanical benefits of these conifers. Which goes back to my comments that trees don't seek windy spaces to survive. They are simply just placed in windy spaces that they then have to deal with. So if you're ever driving down the road and you look at the top of the canopy or you just look at trees naturally um, that have been planted in an area that's new, a new area, if you ever see that windswept looking tree, that tree that's just a little bit sideways or the tree that looked like it just gone through a hurricane, that's what wind stress looks like. So these deformed looking trees, whether that be from the roots to the branches to the main stem, is actually that thigomorphogenic look. That's the word, that's the term we're looking at. And that's what, what that look is called. It's the word of the day. It's the word of the day, thigomorphogenic. So what happens when you shake your house plant? Well, there's a few things that will happen over time. And it's ultimately up to you if you want to see these responses or not. From a root standpoint and those poor root hairs, I would say don't do it. I've never done it with my fiddle leaf fig and that sucker is very, very many feet tall. So, I mean, this is totally up to you as to whether you're not gonna do it, but I'm gonna go through what exactly you're going to see. One of the things you can notice is something called tapper. So tapper is an actual increase in the overall diameter of the main stem. So you're thinking, well, that's, that's exactly what I want. I want a thicker main stem. I want that tapper, but it's not a good thing because when these forestry scientists look at these trees, when they're looking at tapper, they're looking at, an, at it in a negative sense. 
Increased tapper means reduced growth and height. So when you're constantly putting your tree under wind stress, yes, you are increasing the tapper of the plant, but that means you're putting less energy into a taller plant. So what happens is you end up with a thicker tapper with reduced height. So if you want a thicker base and a shorter plant, then make sure the plant focuses all its energy on that thicker base. And you can do that by shaking your plant. Or if you want height and you want the stem to just be a normal stem, which is what you will end up with anyways, then don't shake your plant because then it, your plant will actually put the energy into growing taller. So the common theory for why tapper happens when it's exposed to wind stress and why it reduces the height is actually because if the tree gets any higher, given the current circumstances or the world it's been introduced into, it's going to snap. It's gonna be much more easy to snap the taller it gets. So the tree simply thinks, if I get any taller, I'm just gonna keep on getting shaken, so I'm going to stay small. And that's a complete survival mechanism. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you shake your trees, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.